I'm showing this video actually to ask for advice because I tried to melt down copper. That's the copper wire there. And it turned to molten copper for a very short period of time and then it almost immediately switched over to dross. And so when I poured it out into my ingot molds, it basically was just crumbled up copper with impurities in it. And so I'm looking for advice here. There are a number of things I think I could have done wrong during this process, one of which is you see the old uh, top of the foundry, which I'll be putting on here shortly, is been out in the ice and snow, and it had a bunch of ice on it, and it actually melted into the crucible. And you have like this little bit of melted plaster on top. So I started already with impurities, so that might have done it. And then because these chunks of lump charcoal are so big, some of those also got into the crucible when it got lower. But usually those just bounce on top and you can scrape them out pretty easily. So I didn't think that was it. So my money's on the plaster potentially. And I use this lump charcoal because I've heard it gets significantly hotter than charcoal briquettes. And copper has such a high melting temperature. I think it's like 1900 degrees or around there Fahrenheit. So I needed to get it significantly hotter than I do for my cans. And you see here I switched over to this other brick to use as the cover to try to keep more heat in. And you'll see little glitches in the video because I try to cut out the monotony of waiting for this stuff to even remotely melt. I think the whole process took about 45 minutes for me. And right about here, the wires got really soft and I could kind of mush them into the bottom and it felt like it was starting to melt towards the bottom. But it never felt fully melted at this point. <clears throat> Some odd little editing there. Sorry about that. And at this point, the crucible got so deep into the foundry, I had to repack it. I did this numerous times. This was, I think this was the only time I took it fully out of the cru out of the foundry, so it did get significantly colder right after I did this. And all the wires got hard again. So in retrospect, I wouldn't take it fully out of the foundry. I would try to lift it up and add it around it. So, so potentially this could have even caused the issue of letting it get hot and then cold, I don't know. And then even when you set it on top, even it's back at the foundry, it's gonna be a while before it gets up to the heat it was because it's gotta go th burn through all that that charcoal. Here, like at this point, it's very, very soft, almost to the melting, and <clears throat> I thought we were almost done, but then I started getting huge chunks of charcoal falling in from around the crucible. So I let it burn, try to burn off a little bit. But right there is about the time I'd say I was the closest to having a puddle of, of molten copper. But you can see the amount of charcoal that fell in there. And then I got even more in. That's why I decided to just let it burn off a little bit. And that is why you don't use regular bricks as a cover. It just snapped on me. And there I had it almost completely empty. And it seemed like there was a tiny bit of molten copper at the bottom with like a fair amount of dross at, at the top. But then when I make this pour here, 
it's almost entirely dross. You'll see here it comes out almost like gravel. And then when it when it finally cooled, and I think I get, give a little close up here, but you can't really tell in the camera view, you can clearly see little specks of copper throughout. So ideally, someone out there can help give me advice on what I did wrong, and then also how can I extract the copper that is in this dross so that I don't have to strip a whole bunch of more wires because that was a pain. I think I give you a close up here. But that's the end product, crumbly copper. So if you can give me any help, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching.